Okay, I am bringing you five players that I believe you should sell high in Dynasty Football before it's too late. Do me a favor, drop a like to show some support. That just helps the channel grow. Subscribe if you like Dynasty content. And I want you guys to comment down below. Let me know who is a player that you wanna sell high right now in Dynasty Football before it's too late. Hey, I'm gonna be referencing my rankings quite often in this video. If you want my rankings, as well as the guys from Flock Fantasy, Fantasy Endgame, Fantasy Stock Exchange, and Badaki, if you want all of our rankings, articles, bonus live streams, bonus videos, if you want to unlock all those exclusives, go to flockfantasy.com slash land. If you use our code land, L-A-N-D, you will get 30% off your purchase. Okay, let's get into these sell highs. And please keep in mind that Making a sell high video is much more difficult than a values video because it's easy to try and take shots on values. It's more difficult to tell you to sell a player at its max value, but that's what I'm trying to do here today. The first one, which is kind of an honorable mention, would be Tony Pollard, okay? Since Zeke has left, Tony Pollard's rankings within the community have gotten a little bit out of control. Right now, according to Keep Trade Cut, he is the running back 10. A little bit too high for me, a little bit too rich. I have him as my RB14, and I honestly think that that number could go down as well. Look, this, is, this one's quite simple. I don't see a scenario in which the Cowboys don't draft a running back. Is that Bijan in the first round? If he's there, there's no way they pass up on him. Is it Charbonnet later? Is it maybe Jameer Gibbs? Uh, whatever running back you want to point to in the first three rounds, I would be absolutely shocked if the Cowboys do do not draft an impact running back. So for me, it's quite simple. When that happens, there is no way Tony Pollard is going to remain a top 10 running back in people's dynasty rankings. So I'd like to cash in right now and pivot. And I think this might actually be better if you consider this video a pivot video rather than a sell high, I'm gonna tell you for every single player that I talk about, pivot options that I think could serve you better in the future. So for Tony Pollard, right now, I would pivot to Javante Williams plus draft capital. I would pivot to Najee Harris if that's possible. I would pivot to Nick Chubb. And according to the community, all of those are possible options. Also, if you wanna get a draft pick from him, I'm looking anywhere from the 107 to the 109 right now for Tony Pollard. That puts you in really good range for a Zach Charbonnet, for a Jordan Addison, Quentin Johnson, depending on who falls. So I'm looking to sell Tony Pollard right now. I think this is the prime time window to do it. You let me know if you guys are too. The second player that I would like to sell high or a better term would be pivot away from would be Debo Samuel. Currently ranked as a wide receiver 19 according to the community. For me, he's my wide receiver 24. Let's just revisit Debo's career here for a hot second. In college, he missed 20 games in three seasons with injuries, broken fibula, hamstring injuries. Now we come over to the NFL. In 2019, he missed one game with a groin strain. In 2020, he missed nine games with a foot fracture and hamstring issues. In 2021, he missed another game with a groin strain. In 2022, he missed four games with ankle and MCL sprains. In the past four years, he has missed 15 games that's almost an entire season. And it's very true, because I know some people, I can already hear someone commenting this right now. It's true that previous injuries are not predictive of future injuries. But I would argue that I don't think it's a coincidence that Debo Samuel has been this injured for pretty much since he got into college, right? I don't think it's a coincidence. Why? It's because of Debo's play style. What makes him a superstar also puts him in harm's way. He lines up all over the field, which can actually be incredible for fantasy, but really bad for his health. On screens, you are subject to be tackled from all kinds of weird angles. Out of the backfield, you're meeting defensive linemen in the middle of the offensive line and defensive line. You're getting the worst of safeties, linebackers, defensive linemen. So as he ages, I personally don't see a scenario in which that gets better it's going to be more difficult to recover from those sort of knickknack injuries as he gets older and older. Secondly, what are we doing at quarterback? As much as I love Trey Lance, we have no data right now to suggest that he can support even one fantasy wide receiver. And despite Brock Purdy's incredible run throughout the playoffs, we have no idea what sort of quarterback he's going to be 
after that surgery. And lastly, Christian McCaffrey's impact on this team was huge. It sounds crazy to say, but CMC actually replaced Debo Samuel in the Debo Samuel role when he was acquired by this team. So when this team is entirely healthy, right? CMC, Debo, Ayuk, Kittle, Elijah Mitchell, there are just so many mouths to feed. At some point, I think we just have to admit that maybe we've seen the best season from a player, and that's where I currently am with Debo Samuel. So again, I'm looking to pivot to these names. I'll take Jamison Williams before his breakout. I'll take Najee Harris plus picks. I'll take Christian Watson plus picks. Jerry Judy plus picks. Traylon Burks plus George Pickens plus, Brandon Ayuk plus, Jahan Dotson plus picks. According to the community, all those things are possible. No trade is perfect one for one, but you can you know, have some conversations with people in your league. And if you're looking to move off of him, I would say the 109, again, that Jordan Addison, Quentin Johnston, Zay Flowers territory is a really good uh, point to pivot off of Debo Samuel. Okay, the next player that I believe you should sell high or pivot to, and let me get to the options that you could pivot before you roast me, because I can already feel like this might be the most controversial take on today's video. It's Lamar Jackson, currently quarterback seven according to the community. He is my quarterback eight. So again, I don't dislike Lamar. I just think there are options to pivot away from him. My question to you, and let me know if I'm right or wrong. Do you think we might be holding on too tightly to his 2019 season? That's when Lamar Jackson won MVP and he finished quarterback one in fantasy football. Let's look after that 2019 season, okay? I'm gonna show you his finish in fantasy and his points per game in fantasy, okay? In 2020, he was a quarterback 10 finish, quarterback 10 in points per game. In 2021, Quarterback 15 finish, quarterback eight in points per game. In 2022, quarterback 14 finish, quarterback seven in points per game. Now, to be clear, that is slightly unfair because Lamar did miss some games and he was, you know, he was out early in the games, for example. But I think just looking at this, that's why we have the points per game statistic. It's the most accurate way to judge players who have been injured, where they rank versus the rest of the rest of the quarterback room secondly how will lamar's age impact his rushing ability okay if you look at his attempts per game in that quarterback one season he almost ran 12 times per game okay and you can see here in 2022 that number is down to 9.33 times per game how will lamar jackson fare as he ages okay it's not a perfect fit but i want to show you Michael Vick and how he aged to end his career. Okay, that's the closest thing that we've ever had to Lamar Jackson is Michael Vick. In Atlanta, Michael Vick was ages 21 to 26. In Philadelphia, when he was with the Eagles, he was ages 29 to 33. So if you look at Vick's rushing when he's with Atlanta versus Philadelphia, again, as he aged, less attempts per game, less yards per game. As he aged, he scored less and less points on the ground but that's because he was able to become a better passer. Again, in Atlanta, completing only 53% of his passes. In Philly, that goes up. His passing uh, yards per game goes up. His passing touchdowns per game goes up. So Vic was able to do what we're hoping Lamar will do. I'm not saying that he won't, but Vic was able to kind of transition into being a better passer, not just relying on the legs. He also had a rocket for an arm, which I don't think Lamar Jackson has personally good arm but he doesn't have the rocket that michael vick had so while it was minimal we did see a transformation in vick's game as he aged so you ask yourself do you think lamar jackson can do the same thing and again i think more importantly is where i'm trying to pivot here i think there are great pivot options with lamar jackson right now personally i prefer justin fields over lamar jackson that offense is being built around fields where we haven't really seen the well we saw the breakout year last year but I think we could see a true top five season this year with Justin Fields as they build around him. Can you move to Trevor Lawrence? Generational prospect, breakout year, just added Calvin Ridley. You might have to pay a little bit, but can you make that move potentially? How about Justin Herbert? Again, you might have to pay a little bit extra, but some are worried about him because of Keenan and Mike Williams aging. Here are some other options that you could get more in return if you were to send Lamar Jackson away. Right now, you can get Deshaun Watson and a first. Kyler Murray and a first. 
Dak Prescott and a first. These are just names that I would like to throw out there that I think, again, similar age. Um, I think they have very similar lifespans left. And I think they're just as good as Lamar Jackson as a fantasy option. So roast me if you want in the comments, but I'm personally looking to take advantage of this kind of weird window with Lamar Jackson. I want to pivot. Maybe you don't. And that's okay. The next player that I want to sell high, and this is coming from a Chiefs fan. So, you know, relax. Isaiah Pacheco. According to the community, he is currently running back 23. He's way down, in my opinion, in my rankings. He's RB 36. Okay. Pacheco, whether you like it or not, was a seventh round pick in last year's draft, an end of the seventh round pick even. So what I did is I looked at all running backs that have been drafted in the seventh round or later, so we're also including undrafted free agents, since 2018, and I saw how many of those running backs finished top 24 at the position since that's where he's currently ranked, RB23. How many of those players have finished top 24 ever before? So. 2018, you had quite a few. 2019, not as many. Uh, 2020 was a year we had James Robinson. So again, from 2018 to 2022, two running backs who were drafted in the seventh round or later, undrafted free agents, finished top 24 at the position. Philip Lindsay did it in 2018 and 2019. James Robinson did it in 2020 and 2021. So what happened to those players? Well, Philip Lindsay wasn't signed to a long-term deal. Team had no investment in him. How about James Robinson? Well, right after he broke out, the team went and drafted Travis Etienne in the first round. Other names that come to mind here when I think of Isaiah Pacheco, Elijah Mitchell, incredible rookie season, replaced. Antonio Gibson looked like a superstar. They drafted Brian Robinson. Jordan Howard looked uh, the definition of a superstar in, in Philly. They didn't do anything about it. They didn't invest in him. So what do you think will happen to Pacheco? Do you think he's going to get that kind of investment from the Chiefs, a team that seems like they can rotate running backs and still win championships? Secondly, let me ask you guys, are, were, were you really happy to start Pacheco this season? Uh, he was named the starter in week seven. And let's look at this. Isaiah Pacheco as a starter, he finished as RB30 from week seven onwards. He, in that same span, was the RB38 and he played 41% of the snaps. Jarrett McKinnon, who is the backup in the same time span, finished as the RB9, was the RB13 in points per game, and played 48% of the snaps. My point being, do you think McKinnon is, is going to leave this team in free agency? You know, if he doesn't come back, do you think they're going to draft someone or bring in a different free agent? Or do you really see a scenario in which Pacheco is going to be this workhorse running back playing 60 to 70% of the snaps? I don't think that will happen. Maybe you do. If you do, hold on to Pacheco, but I don't. So I'd, I'd like to sell him high right now. And lastly, the offensive identity for the Chiefs is not surrounded around the run game. They were 24th in rushing attempts per game last year when they won the Super Bowl. They were fifth in passing attempts per game last year when they won the Super Bowl. I just feel like the Chiefs are destined to get another pass catching running back at minimum in the draft or bring back Jarrett McKinnon to play that role because it was so important for them. So who are we looking to pivot to? I would prefer David Montgomery, Tyler Algier, Cam Akers, Joe Mixon, Jamal Williams, Rashad White, Miles Sanders. If you're looking for picks, somehow you can get an early second, the 202. I'm taking that all day. Uh, so for me, as much as I love Pacheco as a fan, I think it's time to sell high. And the last player I would suggest to sell high right now is Darren Waller. Currently the tight end 10, according to the community, I would say that that might even get higher. I have him ranked as my tight end 15. My first question and probably the question on your mind is, can Darren Waller actually stay healthy? Not only can he stay healthy, but can he stay healthy as his body ages? Since 2021, Waller has missed 15 of 34 games. Over 44% of the time, Waller has not played due to injuries. Ankle sprains, knee sprains, hamstring issues. That specifically scares me, the hamstring issues, because as you get older, it's more difficult for your body to recover from that, as we've seen with Keenan Allen, as we've seen with Julio Jones and you are more prone to hamstring injuries as they happen more often. So 
will Darren Waller even be healthy, right? Secondly, when was the last time you could actually rely on Darren Waller as a viable fantasy option? 2020, probably when he was a tight end two. After that, in 2021, he was a tight end seven technically. But if you take out his week one performance where he had like 19 targets, 100 yards and a touchdown, then he would actually have averaged tight end 10 in points per game. In 2022, last year, he was a tight end 12 in points per game. So I can't speak for Giants fans, but I also think that they like Daniel Bellinger. Is there a possibility here where if Darren Waller gets injured for a couple games, Bellinger just establishes himself and then they're not sure exactly where Waller fits into the offense. More importantly, as I've said throughout this entire video, it's all about where you can pivot to. So if I can pivot to the following options, I will do it. Evan Ingram. Yes, I would rather have Evan Ingram in Jacksonville. I like that offense. I like his role in it. David Njoku. I'll take David Njoku. Greg Dulcich plus picks. Chiga Conquo plus picks. Dalton Kincaid plus picks. Trey McBride plus picks. And if you're looking to sell him for draft capital, Darren Waller, that is, I would be looking anywhere from the 203 to the 207 right now. So you tell me, do you think Darren Waller's going to stay healthy? And do you think he's worth tight end 10? I, I would rather capitalize on that sort of value right now. So that is it for today's video. Five names that I think you should sell high before it's too late. Again, sell is a difficult word because it's more about pivoting. I don't hate any of these players. I just prefer other players at their price point. Do me a massive favor. Drop a like to show some support. Subscribe if you like Dynasty content. And I want you to comment down below. Again, tell me what you think about these takes. If you agree, if you disagree, that's okay. And we'll see you in the next video. All love. Now that those idiots are done talking, who needs some rankings? Hell yeah, I need some rankings. Then use promo code LAND, L-A-N-D, for 30% off any membership at flockfantasy.com. Oh. It's so easy. Even your grandma could scan that QR code right there.